The explosive memo that sources say President Trump sees as a way to discredit and undermine special, Rob, special counsel Robert Mueller and the Russia probe. Uh, the memo has now been released after the president approved its release today against the wishes of his own appointees running the Justice Department and the FBI. The memo alleges that the FBI abused its use of surveillance powers to monitor then-Trump campaign advisor Carter Page. A short time ago, President Trump said this about the memo, which was written and authorized for release by Republicans. I think, the, I think it's terrible. You want to know the truth? I think it's a disgrace. What's going on in this country, I think it's a disgrace. The memo was sent to Congress. It was declassified. Congress will do whatever they're going to do. But I think it's a disgrace what's happening in our country. And when you look at that, and you see that, and so many other things, what's going on, uh, a lot of people should be ashamed of themselves, and much worse than that. So I sent it over to Congress. They will do what they're going to do. Whatever they do is fine. It was declassified. And let's see what happens. But a lot of people should be ashamed. CNN senior White House correspondent Pamela Brown uh, joins me now. Pamela, what specifically does the memo allege? There are a few things in this Republican memo. Uh, first off, it alleges that Andy McCabe, the deputy FBI director who essentially quit this week, that he told uh, the House Intelligence Committee that without the dossier, without the Steele dossier that was funded uh, by the DNC and Hillary Clinton's lawyer, that the FBI would have never applied for this FISA warrant for Carter Page. Now, Democrats are disputing that today. Adam Schiff came out and said that's not exactly what he said. Um, the memo goes on to say, and this is new as well, that there was the initial application in October, and then it was renewed three times. This FISA surveillance was renewed for Carter Page three times, which is significant because under FISA rules, you have to show each time you go to the judge that the, the, the surveillance has elicited important information to show that this person is an agent of a foreign power. That has not, that information is not included in here. What exactly came of the surveillance so that the judge continued to renew the FISA. Uh, it goes on to say that critical information was not in the application to the judge. The fact that it says that Christopher Steele had anti-Trump bias uh, that he conveyed to Bruce Orr, who was a Justice Department official, that the fact that the dossier was funded by the Democrats, that that was not in the initial application to the judge. So basically making the case that the judge didn't have all of the pieces of the puzzle to show that there was bias there. And it goes on on the last page, Jake, this is interesting. It mentions George Papadopoulos, who was the Trump campaign aide who uh, pleaded guilty to lying to the FBI and the Russia probe. Now, it's making the case in the memo that that his name was included in the application, but there was no evidence of a conspiracy or communication with Carter Page. Um, but what's interesting here is it sort of undercuts the argument that the dossier was really the only thing the FBI used to get this FISA warrant, because it also says George Papadopoulos was the reason the whole Russia probe started in the first place. In July 2016. In July 2016, he, uh, our reporting is that he told the Australian ambassador that the Russians had incriminating information on Hillary Clinton, thousands of emails. The ambassador told the FBI that kicked this whole thing off. So clearly that information was included uh, in the FISA application. But I will say, you know, it's hard to really make a judgment based on this memo, Jake. It certainly raises some, some questions about the FBI, some concerning questions. But you can't make a judgment because it doesn't include the other information that the FBI included in the application. Right. And for the renewals, it, there's, there's, there's in critical information missing here that the FBI director himself said in that public statement. Right. The FBI uh, said that this memo is misleading because it leaves out a lot of information. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you just a couple questions about Carter Page. First yep. of all, um, this uh, FISA warrant to, to uh, surveil, to spy on Carter uh -huh. Page, is in October 2016, uh, a few weeks before the presidential election. If there is a bias against then-candidate, now-President mm -hmm. Trump, why would beginning to surveil Carter Page, surveillance, of course, takes months, if not mm -hmm. years. It's not like you just spy on somebody once. It's a whole, long, drawn-out process. Why would doing something just a few weeks before the presidential election 
reveal some horrific political bias against Donald Trump. Do you see what I'm saying? Right. It and why would It would they... not have an impact on the presidential election. Right, exactly. And the argument is made um, that, look, if there was really bias, that James Comey would have talked about this before the election. You know, he would have raised concerns about the Trump campaign ties to Russia. Uh, as we know, he reopened the, the Hillary Clinton investigation, but he didn't talk about this. He didn't talk about this until March after the election. And so it sort of raises the question of, well, if there really was political bias, then why didn't he... Why didn't he mention it before the election? Also, it's, it's interesting that, you know, this whole memo is based on Carter Page. The, right. the argument is made that um, the FBI was biased against the Trump campaign by going after Carter Page without credible information. But up until this point, Jake, the Trump administration has basically said they didn't even know who Carter Page is, that he was a nobody, he wasn't really part of the campaign. So that really doesn't square. And let's not forget that Carter Page was under surveillance by the FBI. In 2013. In 2000, yeah, 14, 13, 14, for yeah. his ties to a Russian mob. So they previously had thought he could be acting as a spy on behalf of the Russians. This isn't the first time that they were asking to surveil Carter Page. Yeah, I'm not sure that this memo answers questions more than it asks and poses more questions. Uh, Pamela, stand by. Uh, the release of the memo is setting off a conflict uh, that even Washington uh, has not seen uh, before to this degree. It, it's the president and most of his party's lawmakers versus the top law enforcers in the nation, many of them appointed by President Trump, who strongly opposed the memo being released, saying it was inaccurate. The officials include uh, Deputy Attorney General uh, Rod Rosenstein, who obviously uh, supervises the Mueller investigation. Rosenstein is mentioned in the memo as one of the officials who signed uh, one of the applications, uh, or renewals rather, for a warrant targeting uh, Carter Page. Here was President Trump's response uh, when Rosenstein's name uh, came up earlier. You, you figure that one out. So the question was, are you likely to fire Rod Rosenstein? And the answer, you figure that one out from President Trump. Let's go to the White House and CNN's Caitlin Collins. Caitlin, uh, the White House just gave a statement right, uh, right now uh, about the memo being released. Yeah, that's right, Jake. They just published a statement uh, shortly after the president left the White House, departed on the South Lawn, boarded Marine One, didn't take questions from reporters. But just minutes after that, the White House put out a statement on why they authorized the release of this memo. Uh, I'm going to read you a little bit of it. In one graph, they say, this decision was made with input from the president's national security team, including law enforcement officials and members of the intelligence community, for whom the president has great respect. He is especially grateful to the hardworking rank-and-file public servants who work every day to keep America safe and uphold our laws while protecting the constitutional rights of all Americans. Now, the statement goes on to reference that Democratic memo saying that they are, quote, stand ready to work with Congress to accommodate oversight requests, Jake. But regardless, the last two questions that many people are left with here today is, one, what is going to happen to the Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein in his future? Because as you just showed, the president's comment earlier was not exactly a vote of confidence in his future at the Department of Justice. And secondly, what happens to the the president's relationship with the FBI director, Christopher Wray, who pleaded with the president to not release this memo, not to authorize the release of it. And the president ignored that advice and released the memo anyways. So those are the two questions that we're left with here at the White House today.